Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for another session of the Grand Rounds. Our guest today is Dr. Alan Scarrow. He's the president of the Mercy Clinic in Springfield, Missouri. He's an MD, JD, and he'll be talking to us about salient details related to medical liability and, most importantly, how the neurosurgeon can stay safe. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Aaron. Uh, today we're going to uh, talk about, uh, a, a look at a review of medical liability for the neurosurgeon and how to stay safe. In particular, this comes up in uh, a, a, a surgery that we do very commonly, degenerative spine surgery. Um, we also get sued, as we're going to talk about in a little bit, uh, most commonly because of input either from our colleagues uh, at, at our hospital or our clinic or even other neurosurgery colleagues. Uh, so that what we say to patients uh, who come into our office that have maybe been seen by uh, surgeons prior to us is, is very important. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So arguably malpractice, uh, at least in the courtroom, is a, a bit of theater. And so I'm going to present this here as, uh, uh, you know, with the backdrop of a, of a stage here as we, as we talk about some of the characters uh, that will be involved in a malpractice case. So the first one, the first uh, uh, person in the cast is obviously the, the plaintiff, and presumably this is a, a patient of yours or maybe a former patient of yours. And the who, as far as who is the plaintiff, is, is very critical uh, with regard to the malpractice case. Plaintiffs or patients that are more credible, that are believable, uh, that make good witnesses, um, look very attractive, both to a plaintiff's attorney and then uh, to a jury in a court of law. So uh, again, patients that come into an attorney's office that have a good story, that are able to communicate effectively, um, that would be able to uh, convey the story both uh, of their life before the surgery and the consequences after, those are going to be uh, patients that uh, are plaintiffs and clients for, for attorneys that, that are very attractive because those are the ones that are going to be uh, the best witnesses uh, in, a, in, a, in a court. And so the who, as, as far as who the plaintiff is, is, is very critical in that. And then you have the plaintiff's attorney. Now, I've, I've chosen this photo that I pulled off the internet um, uh, as a, who's a, a plaintiff's attorney for obvious reasons. I mean, this fellow looks fairly imposing. And I chose this because uh, I wanted to convey the point uh, that plaintiff's attorneys uh, tend to be fairly aggressive. They are going to come after you as a defendant, they are going to try to stoke your emotions uh, to try and get you to say things or feel things um, that will ultimately play in their favor. And so you've got to know this up front, that even though you're going to have a host of emotions, uh, some anger, maybe some resent, um, uh, that the, the, the plaintiff's attorney are going to use these types of things against you. Uh, to pull out things, to have you say things uh, that could be taken out of context, maybe that you don't mean, but in the heat of the moment, they will uh, uh, try to try to uh, get your emotions to play uh, uh, into their into their hands. Um, so they're 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 going to be kind of like this guy. They're going to be aggressive uh, and and come after you. Uh, so we don't like these guys so much. Uh, at least they when they are up against us, we. We see them uh, not, in, not in a favorable light. Okay, the next person in the cast is typically the hospital. And the reason I bring these up, is, as we're going to talk about a little bit later uh, in, in this talk, is that the, the hospital is commonly a co-defendant with neurosurgeons in a malpractice case. And, of course, hospitals are not inanimate objects. They are run by people. Uh, and so the administrators or the, sometimes the case managers or, or risk managers uh, in a hospital are charged with limiting the, ex the liability exposure that the hospital is at, uh, limiting the amount of money that the hospital has to pay out. Now, sometimes uh, neurosurgeons are employees of hospitals, and in those cases, uh, the hospital uh, may have the same attorney as the neurosurgeon does. But in some cases, they don't. Uh, some cases, uh, with the hospital will have one attorney, the, the neurosurgeon will have another attorney, and the goals that the hospital and the neurosurgeon have regarding the outcome of the case may not be the same. Um, so the hospital is a key player as well. The hospital has an attorney, as we've just talked about, and that attorney is charged with, again, carrying out uh, the mission of limiting the liability.